Hi, I'm going to do an interview via Skype with Catherine Rosa, who is in Mexico right now. And Catherine was the former principal of McKeever Arts Academy or McKeever Elementary here in Gainesville, Georgia. We're going to be discussing a little bit about charter schools and uh, her own experience uh, as principal of an important charter school, uh, now magnet school, here in Gainesville, Georgia. So I've edited out uh, some of the conversation, uh, but we hope that uh, we got uh, some of the principal points across. Morning. Oh, good morning. Okay. Uh, so um, I wanted to review just a little bit about charter schools because it's, it was confusing to me. And so um, this is the way I understand it, uh, or actually the way Wikipedia and some of the media understand it, so that might, might not be quite right. Uh, the basic idea is that you have something that's some, uh, more autonomous than a regular public school, and they say that this is in exchange for being held accountable for student achievement. So that there's going to be uh, an organization that kind of monitors the achievement of these students. And some of the things that charter schools can do is um, they're not necessarily required to hire certified um, teacher certification or, or state yeah. certified teachers. They can differ in their curriculum um, to a certain extent. And uh, is that about right? Um, Wikipedia got it just about right, but there's there in Georgia there were two types of charter schools. There were the startup charters where parents or even a corporation would want to start up a school and um, they would apply to the state for a charter for their school and they would set up the criterion for hiring and practices for teachers and what curriculum they were going to use and um, they would actually be in charge of funding and everything that the, the state didn't give charters funding but and then and then there's another side of it i was not a charter school like that i was a public charter school i was part of a public school system that was a charter school within a system so it's a little bit different okay and i think it's very confusing to people when i think we had at one point 10 schools in hall county that went charter um didn't mean that we we were totally autonomous we were autonomous to a point but we were still accountable to not only the state but to our district as well we went to the state to become a charter because we wanted some um some opportunity to bend the rules a little bit we were still a title one school so we couldn't hire anybody that was not certified okay like, there's all, all kinds of layers of rules that people don't understand so uh, at my cover arts all of our teachers were certified even though we were a charter school um but we went to the state to give us opportunity to change the schedules because um, the state requires you X number of minutes of physical education, X number of minutes of this, X number of minutes of math, X number of minutes of science. We wanted to shift those um, numbers a little bit and that's what we did. That was part of our charter and we wanted to use the arts to teach um, through the arts and that's what integration is all about. Okay, so, so in your case uh, what they call the um the authorizer is the, the one who controls the mission of the school was the state itself. Yes. And we uh, had to and, 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 um, uh, present our charter to the state. Right. We were asked new, we had a panel of people from my community, stakeholders, parents, right. um, teachers, students that had to answer questions from the state about our charter. Um, and, and, then, and then you had to be held uh, accountable uh, in some way, some measurement, I presume. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, you mentioned language scores. Was that going to be the measurement or, or was it some other form of achievement? Um, as I think back, because we're going back a, a number of years now, um, it, we were using the CRCT at the time. The milestone was not our, um, our test. So we were using um, gains on the CRCT. What, what is CRCT? It's a criterion reference test that actually tests kids on what we teach. Okay. okay? And we were also using the Georgia writing tests, which okay. they, which the state does not use anymore because all the writing is embedded, embedded in the 
the Georgia milestone. But I was figuring, you know, if 80% of my kids were coming to Mex or coming to kindergarten not speaking English, and they did really well on the writing test at the end of fifth grade. Wow. That was a measure of success. For yeah, me. it certainly is. Yeah. In terms of your experience as a principal, and in terms of your uh, your being at the school, what do you think was the greatest outcome that, uh, in terms of student achievement? So I think the, great, the greatest outcome for as far as I'm concerned. Um, there were a couple of really good outcomes. One of them is hard to measure because it was the thrill of kids coming to school and really enjoying school. Um, we had what we call a Create Friday. And every Friday, every kid, um, every nine weeks got to choose, from third grade up, got to choose what area they wanted to work in. And we had pottery classes, yoga classes, dance. We had a garden um, with a greenhouse and we had a garden, a gardening expert. We had. A, we had a kid's kitchen where the kids could take food from the garden and cook it or make pastries or make pasta. We had um, all kinds of great create classes. So every Friday, our attendance rate was like 99.5%. I mean, it was great. <laughs> no one wanted to leave on Friday. Everyone so suddenly, was... suddenly you had no sick kids. <laughs> we had, suddenly we had no sick kids, no epidemics. Um, <laughs> So, and, and, but not only that, we, we create was one of the components of our charter. And then the other component was we asked teachers to use arts integration as frequently as they possibly could. Mm -hmm. So kids that were, because of language, you only about by 10 o'clock, if you've ever been in a bilingual situation, even as an adult, after a couple of hours, your brain just shuts off. You, you can't absorb anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, we were taking those kids and we were using the arts, so we were relaxing their brain so that they can engage longer in the intense language, you know, uh, intense academic language that they had to kind of keep up with. Um, so the arts were really helpful in teaching the, the content, but they were also very helpful in helping the kids that were um, learning this new language to process the information better. I mean, it was just amazing. Um, so those were the two uh, hard to measure outcomes, but we do have a measurement if you want to use the CRCT, because like I said, when our population was growing in our non-English speakers category, you would expect our test scores to be going down, but that was not the case. They were both going up. That's, a, so. that's great. And looking back on it, you mentioned a lot of the things that you're so happy about with the student achievement and everything, uh, but I'm wondering something kind of uh, personal about about one's own uh, growth and development and I don't know, you might call it spiritual awakening or understanding or uh, realization of some sort of ethical, moral goal that is sort of lifelong thing. Um, and if you can, just reflect on that in terms of your own personal fulfillment. How do you mm -hmm. think that whole experience uh, work for you? Well, I had a child that went through McEver when it was a traditional school. And it, this is a child who's really, really bright and really, really creative. And currently she's a designer in an architecture firm. And she hated going to school every day, hated going to school. So I really wanted to design a school and dream. we dreamed a school that would have been perfect for a, a, a kid like that, mm -hmm. that the bright kid that had the create that needed the creative outlet outlet. But on the other hand, it, it's not just it's, this. This model was not just good for that child. It was good for all kids. Mm -hmm. Our love kids were succeeding and excelling. So I feel like we every kid deserves something like this. Um, this is the way if we're going to compete with um, the, you know, the, the TV yeah. and the iPhone and the, the Internet and Google, we've got to do it. We've got to do we can't do education like we did 50, 60, 70 years ago. Yeah. We change up to to meet our clientele. So in my opinion, I think it's ethically wrong to not work like this. And, 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 and do this. Is it hard? Oh, Tony, it was so hard. It was mm -hmm. so difficult. We, we had teachers that didn't know that they had any skills in the arts. And we had an opportunity before we went charter. It was the teachers who said, if there's anybody not on board, we need them to go someplace else. 
So I, I personally met with every teacher and asked them, is this something that you can support and be behind? So in terms of your uh, overall uh, feeling about it, you feel that uh, on a personal level, your uh, helpfulness to your own child was replicated uh, a thousand times over and uh, raised up the whole community to a new level of, of uh, intelligence and skill and language ability and uh, ability to co cope with the world. Yes. Is that right? I, well, I think it, it also teaches collaboration, um, okay. work together. Um, it teaches them the skill set that they're going to need in the 21st century to be successful. But like I said, I really think that if schools aren't doing something that promote rigor and create excitement, I think that they're in the wrong business. They shouldn't be educating kids. Wow. Now that I that's, mean that. That's quite a yeah. statement. Okay. Uh, do you help? It, think it will help uh, the United States uh, compete more with the some of the outcomes from other countries? Oh, I, I definitely think so. And in Finland is the one that they always compare. They're on the top of the list. Okay. And um, Finland's about the size of Georgia or Texas, maybe. And um, they have, I think our school looked at it, look, would look like, very much like a fin, fin, Finnish school. Okay, that's about where we had to stop the conversation to keep our time down. There were some topics we left out, uh, such as how charter schools became magnet schools. And uh, another topic I would like to discuss with you, if you want to contact me, is homeschooling. So if you're involved in homeschooling or uh, charter schools or magnet schools, contact me and uh, we can set up an interview. Thanks for watching. See you next time.